Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. All right, so we can go ahead and get started. Title of today's class is Dolo Will Get You Killed, Dealing with a Self-Willed Spirit. Pull up that uh, first definition, that definition of that urban dictionary definition of dolo. You had to zoom in. Dolo, the definition of dolo. Where is it at? Meaning, doing something in your own without the help or advice of others. Oh, uh, read the whole, read the whole thing. Dolo, D one O. No, no, no. It's done on lonely. Done on lonely, by O. No, nah, done on lonely by oneself. Done on lonely by oneself. <laughs> Meaning, doing something in your own without the help or advice of others. Informal, originated in the New York area and commonly used by hip-hop artists from that particular region. Dolo, or death for self. See, there's no one else. Q-Tip Award Tour by Tribe Called Quest. So that's the definition of dolo, meaning you're doing, you're doing your own, basically, in layman terms, you're doing your own thing under your own counsel, your own direction, your own upbringing. You ain't listening to nobody, nothing that nobody else can tell you. That's how our people, that's how... Of many of us have lived prior to coming into this truth, and that's how our people live. That's why our communities are in dire straits. But as we are in this truth and we repenting, that's not the life we're supposed to be living. That's not how we're supposed to think. That's a self-willed spirit, and we have to repent of that. Get to Rock chapter 10 and verse 7. A self-willed spirit is a prideful spirit. It's the book of Sirach chapter 10 and verse 7. Pride is hateful before God and man. So it says the self, basically the help, the self-willed spirit is hateful before God and men. How many of y'all have encountered somebody that's, that's arrogant, that walk around like you can't, can't nobody tell them nothing? Do you like being around them? No, you don't want to talk to them. You don't want to interact with them. If you're at work, you try to avoid them. That's what it means. It says, read that again. Pride is hateful before God and man. And by both doth one commit iniquity. So pride is hateful before God and men. That prideful spirit is a self-willed spirit. When you're rolling in the prideful spirit, the most high don't, ain't going to have nothing to do with you. Because if, you got, if you're rolling in a self-willed spirit, that means you ain't keeping God's commandments. You ain't doing what he told you to do. And so you're going to be hateful before God and men. Ain't nobody going to have nothing to do with you because you don't, you don't listen. You don't want to, you don't listen to counsel. You don't listen, you don't uh, listen to what other brothers may say or sisters may say. May, they may point something out, you, out in you that they see and you, nah, that ain't me. That ain't me. You always, it's always your way or the highway. That's not, that's not how we're supposed to be in this truth. We come into this truth, we rebuild in the nation, so we have to learn to work with one another. The only way we're going to work together is if we let that pride down. We got to be pliable. We, we got to be pliable. We got to be submissive one to another. We got to be able to submit to one another. Um, read on. Verse 8. Because uh, Jump to 9. Verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? So the question, this is a sarcastic question. Why is earth and ash is proud. We walk around with a prideful spirit when today we here and tomorrow we gone. We return right back to the dust. We didn't we didn't create ourselves. We didn't put ourselves here. We didn't put we didn't we didn't put ourselves if we have a good job, we had the understanding we have. We didn't we didn't do nothing to get the understanding we have. The most high gave us the understanding we have. The most high spared our life so that we can live to see the day that we walk in the day. So that we can live to see the point, because none of us grew up as Israel. None of us grew, no, grew up knowing we was Israel. And even if we had an inkling of knowing we was Israel, we wasn't keeping the commandments. So you might as well not have known you was Israel. So we didn't give ourselves none of these things. So we have nothing. We have no reason to be prideful and self-willed. Read. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Then it says there is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. 
pride, if you got a prideful spirit, that's coupled with a covetous spirit. Because you, if you got a prideful spirit, you covet power. You covet to be always seen, always to be on the spotlight. You're vainglorious. That's not the spirit we're supposed to roll in. You do things to be seen by men. You don't do things because you fear God. You do things so you can get, get accolades. Read. For such as one set of his own soul to sell, because while he liveth, he casts away his bowels. Jump to 12. Verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God, and his heart is turned away from his maker. So the beginning of pride. Is when you depart from God. You depart from God. You turn your back on his commandments. You turn his back on the prophets, the leaders that set over you, and do your own thing. That means you turned away from your God. So if you if you come, if you in here and there's orders that go out and you're like, nah, I ain't doing that. I ain't gotta do that. You being self-willed. You departing from God and you would you don't even realize. When you're whirling in that spirit, you don't even realize it. You stop coming to the Sabbath. You you uh had your head, the sisters had a head out when it's supposed to be covered, when scriptures coming out, various things. Men, men breaking the Sabbath, all of those things, that's pri that's a prideful, self-willed spirit. Anytime you catch yourself doing something on your own, oh no, I ain't gotta get counsel on that. That, that ain't bad. That ain't this. You that's a self-willed and prideful spirit. That's not how we're supposed to roll, read. For pride is the beginning of sin. And he that, that have it. For it pride, for pride is the beginning of sin, and he that have it shall pour out abomination. Meaning, everything, all of your works is gonna be abominable because you're rolling in a self-willed, prideful spirit. You don't want to listen to the scriptures come out, and you don't want to hear it. And it's been believed that there's many Israelites that's walking around with a fringe, with fringes on and the border of blue. Sisters got head covers, got they dress on, but they rolling in this very spirit. They don't listen. They don't fear the men that set up on over them. They don't fear God, and thereby they walk in the in the imagination of their own heart. They do their own thing. They do what they want to do. Read, and therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities, and overthrew them utterly. And this is rolling in that self will spirit. This is why we, a lot of times while we go through. Troublous times and harsh things. That's why hell. That's why we in captivity, because we rolled. We did. We 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 turned our back on the Most High God. We said, "Oh no, we could do better. We are gonna do what the nations did. We are gonna roll in the spirit of the nation, other other nations." Uh, read on, verse fourteen. The Lord have cast down the thrones of proud princes, and set up the meek in their stead. Read, verse, read that again. The Lord have cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. So this is letting you, when, when you're rolling in a prideful spirit, you're not going to get far. The Most High is going to eventually humble you. The Most High is going to eventually humble you. Uh, where, where is that at? Read on. Verse 15. The Lord have plucked up the root of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. So it says, back in 14, it says, The Lord has cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. When you have a, um, how do I say? When you walk around like you high and mighty, like you can't be touched, can't nobody touch you, you know it all, the most high is going to humble you. But when you walk around with a humble spirit, a, 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 not saying that you're walking around with a woe is me, you you just walking around with your head down all the time, but you humble, you don't, you don't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Huh? You lowly of mind. You, you, you have a humble spirit. The most high is going to exalt you because you don't walk, you don't think because you know some scriptures. You don't think you on top of the world now. You don't think you better than your brother or sister that's, that's building right along with you. You have a lowly and meek spirit. Yeah, let's get that. Proverbs 16 and 18. You have, when you have a lowly and meek spirit, the most high is going to raise you up. The most high is going to exalt you. The most high is going to put you in a seat of honor because he see that you're not doing it to please men. He see that you're doing it to please him. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction. 
So before destruction, there's pride. So if you catch yourself, you can't listen to no correction. The sister try to pull you to the side, let you know your head, your head not covered or your dress too short, and you got something you gotta, you got you uh buck up. You don't want to hear it. You're rolling in the self will spirit, and you don't know. None of us know how much mercy we got, so to say. So you don't know the most I could just snatch his spirit away from you. So if your sister or your brother pull you to the side to, to nudge you like, hey, I know that you've been doing this. I know you know that you've been, you've been off a little bit here. Listen. Even if you don't see it, you listen. You, hey, you know what? I, don't, I ain't see that, but I'm going to examine myself. I'm going to check that out and see if I'm, running. if I'm rolling in that spirit, I'm going to find the scriptures and I'm going to fix it so that I don't, I don't be an offense to my brother. Also, officer, a lot of times people like to think that um, the only way to be going against what's actually coming out is to buck up. You can nicely disagree with a person and be like, I don't think what you're saying is correct, right? That's an example or a degree of bucking up. You could be nice as hell with not agreeing with the correction that's coming out. But as long as you got something to say against what's coming out, you're bucking up, no matter what degree of niceness you use. So just keep that in mind. When somebody say, I see this in you, okay, all right. Lord, give me the vision to see what this person is seeing in me and the spirit to go and correct it, all right? That's it. Hey, really quick, also... Uh, concerning what the officer said, when when you if somebody corrects you about something, nine times out of ten, if you have the devil on you, you're not going to see it because you have the devil on you. You're not going to see it. So if somebody says something, you should be willing or able to apply loving thy neighbor as you love yourself. And if they uh, say something, even though you don't see it, acknowledge it and examine yourself and be willing to fix it or just continue examining yourself and do whatever it is that you got to do, okay? But nine times out of ten, you're not going to see it because you yourself has the devil on you, okay? All right, that's it. Uh, pull up that definition of pride. Pride. Inordinate self-esteem. Inordinate self-esteem. I mean, a, a non-ordinary self-esteem, an unnatural self-esteem. Yeah, we're supposed to have a level of self-esteem. That's, we're supposed to have a level of self-esteem, but when it's uh, in or pride is when you just overboard with it. You unreasonably um, selfish. Read. An unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority and talents. Beauty, well, Because I went to school. I went to this college. I went to this Ivy League college. I'm good. We can't have that, man. Read. Wealth, accomplishments. Rank or elevation in office, which manifests itself in lofty airs, distance, reserve, and often in contempt of others. And often in contempt of others. You think your stuff don't stink. You walk around high and mighty. Um, Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. We, we all have to understand and know that we, only the only reason we have the understanding that we have, even if you if you if you have what certain talents, gifts, abilities, even the things that you learned prior to coming into this truth, the only reason you learned it because the Most High allowed you to learn it. The Most High put it in you. Whatever He put you in a situation you grew up in, so that you can learn certain things. So that when He when He brought you. When he brought you to the understanding, you could use those gifts and talents to help build up the nation. That's why you learned those things. You didn't learn those things because of you you did something right or you was in the right place at the right time. No, the most high put you in a place. The most high put you in place so that you could pick up the gifts and talents that you needed so that you could be uh, conducive to building up this kingdom. That's the right word, right? Yep. <laughs> Read. Okay. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 3. For I say, through the grace that given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. None, 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 none of us need to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. 
no matter how good you, of course, we know we are the Israelites. We're the greatest nation on the face of the earth. There's things that we can do that no other nation can do. But we can't get high-minded with that, especially when it's to the detriment of our own people. We can't be high-minded. We can't walk on a high horse towards our brothers and sisters. That's not how, we, that's not how we're supposed to move. We're supposed to walk humble and lowly, knowing that the most, whatever gifts we got, the most high could take it from you. The most, the most high could break your fingers. Call, some, call something to happen, and your fingers are broken. Now you, now you, now you crippled. Call something to happen where you get sick, now you paralyzed. You get in a bad car accident. Anything, the most high can make anything happen. He, the most high is a master chess player. He can make, make things happen where you're not able to use that ability no more. So we all have to always remember that, that everything that we got, it ain't because of nothing good we did. It's because the most high put it in our spirit. The most high gave us them talents so that we could use them for the nation. Read. But to think soberly, uh -huh. according as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. And it says, according as God hath dealt. God hath dealt. Not what we did, not because we studied 16 hours a day, and now we know all these precepts. No, it's because the most high God, because you could read, you could have been, you could have read this Bible 20 times and had no understanding. And you know that if you was in Christianity for any length of time, you have people that was, that, that was in the Christian church for 40 years and was actually reading the Bible and had no understanding, never knew that they had to keep the commandments, never knew that they was Israel. That's because the most high God didn't open their eyes and we always got to remember that. We all, majority of us woke up, what, in our late 20s, late 30s, late 40s? We knew nothing about the Bible as, it, as we learn it now. So that, that should remind us that the, we, we got this understanding because the most I gave it to us. We got everything that we got, whether it be houses, cars, whatever you have, it's because the most High allowed you to have it. Uh, from there, go to uh, Isaiah chapter 64. Is it 64? 64 and 6. This is the book of Isaiah uh, chapter 64 and verse 6. Started verse 4. Verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen. O oh God, Beside thee, what he have prepared for him that waited for him. We, we, don't, we have no understanding. We have no understanding of, of the creation of the world, how everything was framed. And we damn sure don't know what we, what, if, we, if we endure in keeping the commandments. We have, our imagination can't even fathom what's, what's prepared for us. Read. Verse 5. Through metis, thou, thou, excuse me, thou metis him. That rejoiceth and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thy are wroth, for we have sinned. And those is content, contentious, continuous, continuous, and we shall be saved. Uh huh. Verse six. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. We have to always keep that in mind, no matter how. How many gifts, how many talents, how good we are in things. Our thoughts are wicked. Our thoughts are always evil. We always, we all, that's why the scriptures, that's why Paul say he, um, he had to buffet his body daily. I'm mixing, I think I'm mixing two scriptures up. But he said daily, he had to die daily. Because our thoughts will go wandering just out, just off the, just if we, we could be doing something in the middle of handling business, doing something, and our mind would just wander off. We just passed the season where most of us grew up celebrating Christmas and all these holidays, and we just passed the season. You go into a, a grocery store, and if you don't have headphones on, you don't have something to get your mind, so you're not listening to that music, you mess around, get in your car, be driving, and humming Christmas carols. That lets you know we have no, the, just being us being that frail, that it's, it's it's, so, it's that hard to get that stuff out of our mind. We got to understand, we have no right to be proud for walking around like we high and mighty. Uh, read on. 
and we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. We stumble. We make mistakes. We don't have no, we don't have no reason to be walking around prideful. Not saying that we don't take pride in our work. Not saying that we don't uh, do the, put, put our best foot forward when we're doing things. But we, in, our be, in, in putting our best foot forward, we don't step on our brothers and sisters. We don't try to make somebody else look. We don't, have to, we, don't try to, we don't have to put somebody else down so that we can rise up to the top, so we can be high and mighty. That's not how we're supposed to roll. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to move, and that's what charity is. Charity is not vainglorious. Charity don't puff itself up. That's how we are supposed to walk towards one another. We're not supposed to take the things that we know, the gifts that we have, and make and use them to make our brother or sister feel stupid or look bad. That's not the spirit that we are supposed to roll in. Uh, from there, go to, we read the definition of prayer, right? 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 1. It's the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the works of the Lord. So here we see Saul receiving instructions from Samuel that the, Samuel that the Lord told Samuel to give to Saul. And this is, this is what he's looking at an example of a prideful, self-willed spirit. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all they had that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So we see here a very clear, like the scriptures say, he gave him straight commandment. He told him clearly what to do. He said, now go and smite Amalek, utterly destroy all that they have, spare them not. Slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Jump to verse 7. Let's see what Saul did. Verse 7. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Hevelah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag. They spared Agag. But the, the command was to destroy everybody and everything and every animal. Read. And the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and of the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. So we see here, Saul clearly did his own thing. He clearly did opposite of what he was commanded to do. And I want to point one more thing out. Jump back up to verse 1. Verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul. So Samuel said to Saul, Samuel was the prophet. Samuel was the judge at this time. He was the man set up over Saul to set him up by the Lord. That's the leadership that we have today from the bishops, the deacons, the captains, the officers, the, uh, the soldiers the, from the top down. This is the same thing. It says, Samuel also said unto Saul, read, and excuse me, the Lord set me to anoint thee to be king over his people over Israel. Uh huh. Now, therefore. Hearken down unto the voice of the words of the Lord. So this is Samuel talking to Saul. But Samuel is talking to Saul. He's not talking to Saul in his own power. He's talking to Saul in the spirit of the Lord. That's the same thing we have set up within our organization. With the, the, that's the purpose of the ranking structure. Because we have men set up over us. And things that's set in place, we're supposed to carry it out. And don't don't have it. I point this out because a lot of a lot of people, a lot of Israel have that thought process of, oh, that's a man. I ain't following what man. Oh, I ain't doing what another man, another man or another woman can't tell me what to do. But you, what you don't realize is, the Most High speaks through. He uses he 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 sends his messages through men. So if you disregarding the men, 
you best believe you ain't gonna follow Christ when he come back. Because you can't even follow the men that set up before him. You self-will. You're not gonna, if you can't follow the men that set up and been here before you, been here studying and building and doing the work before you, you're not gonna listen to Christ. You're gonna get put to death in the wilderness. Because you disregard, you disregard the men he set up. You're gonna disregard him. Don't think it, don't have the thought in your mind like, oh, I'm gonna obey when Christ comes. No, you're not, because you're not even, you're not even doing it to the men that set up over you now. Jump up to uh, 19. Verse so 19. now we see, we see what the command was. We see what Saul actually did, which was completely opposite. He did his own thing. He was self-willed. Now go to jump to 22. Let's see what the judgment is. 19, not 19, disregard. Uh, start at 22. Verse no, 19, 19. You're right, you're right. 19. Right. Wherefore then didst not thou oh, not, excuse me. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil? And did his evil in the sight of the Lord. So now Samuel is correcting. This is what Officer Judah brought out. So Samuel, Samuel is correcting Saul. Hey, you got the devil on you. You didn't, you didn't obey the voice of, of the Lord. And read on. Verse 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Saul didn't even realize he had the devil on him. He was out completely out the spirit. He said, No, I did, I did obey the voice of the Lord. Read. And have done the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agad, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. That's what, that's what the spirit of pride, the spirit of a self-willed spirit do. It blinds you. You think, you, you think you're doing right. Saul had the whole devil on him, and when he was corrected, he, he made an excuse. Like, no, nah, I did what the Lord told me to do. I spared Agag, and now I did. Go read on. But the people took of the spoil. Sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gagal. So, so he made an excuse of him saving King Agag a lot and then shifted the blame on the people for keeping the, the cattle. He shifted the blame on them. No, they was following your lead because you was being self-willed. You led them to be self-willed. That's what happens because believe it or not, we... Each and every one, we always, it's always somebody watching, watching what we do, watching how we move. So if we get to moving in a self-willed spirit and we cause our brother or sister to stumble because we going off, we're going we to have to give an account for that. Read. Verse 22. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Most I said, I don't want your sacrifice. I don't want your dedication. I want you to obey what I said. I want you to do what I told you to do. So we can't. We can never get to the point where we roll in the self willed spirit. We always got to be pliable, humble. If we're not being told to break the commandments, that all we should be understood. Let me get to it. Let me get it done. Read. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. Uh-huh. Read on. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he have also rejected thee for being king. So when we roll in a self-willed spirit, that's a rebellious spirit, that's a spirit of witchcraft. We're gonna be rejected. We're not gonna get, we're not gonna be, we're not gonna get that reward. That those do, that are obedient and keep the commandments gonna get. We gonna our reward is gonna be destruction. Our re, our reward is gonna be that eternal hellfire that Deacon Malachi brought out Monday. I think that was was that last week Sunday, last Sunday. That that's gonna be our reward. So we have to make sure that we are not rolling in the self will spirit. We have to make sure that we doing what the Most High called us to do. And if we haven't been doing it, we have to examine ourselves and start making those changes. Uh, go to Sirach chapter 3 and verse 26. Sirach chapter 3 and verse 26. It's the book of Sirach chapter 3 and verse 26. A stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last. And he that loveth danger shall perish therein. Pull up the definition of stubborn. There's definition number one. Unreasonable or perversely unyielding. 
unreasonably or perversely unyielding. I mean, you ain't listening to nothing and nobody telling you you unmovable. You're, you're not going to move. You're, 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 uh, you're unyielding. Read. Number two, justifi justifiably undefiled, unyielding, excuse me. Justifiably unyielding. Suggestive or typical go of to a verse. strong... Go to, uh, not verse, but go to the third one. Third one. Difficult to handle. Difficult to handle. Manage or treat. Now read that scripture. Read the scripture again. Sirach chapter 3 and verse 26. A stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last. A stubborn heart. So a heart that is unreasonably or perversely unyielding shall do what? Shall fare what? Shall fare evil at the last. You're going to get destroyed. The most high going to put you to death. Or he gonna preserve you. He gonna he gonna he gonna he gonna show mercy on you and let you keep going, keep going, keep going, and then you gonna get put to death in the wilderness. So read that scripture again. Sirach chapter three and verse twenty six. A stubborn heart, or a heart that is difficult to handle, manage, or treat. Read. Shall or evil at the last. Meaning you don't listen to nobody. It's all your way. You don't you don't hear no you don't hear no correction. You don't take heed to nothing nobody say. You do what you want to do when you want to do it at all times. It says you're gonna fear evil at the last. Read. And he that loveth danger shall perish therein. Uh-huh. Read on. Verse 27. An obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows. An obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows, meaning your life gonna be sorrow sorrowful. Because you're stubborn. You don't listen to nobody. Nobody's going to be around you. Nobody want to be around you. You wonder why when you come sit down, everybody scatter. Everybody move to the other side of the room. They go, so they go elsewhere because they don't want to deal with you because you're stubborn. You don't listen. Um, did you finish that verse no. 27? No. Read on. And the wicked man shall heap sin upon sin. You gonna, you gonna be, you gonna be in this sin and that sin. You're going to be in adultery here. Then you're going to be in the midst of being a thief and being co covetous, you're gonna be you just gonna be in the midst of sin. You're gonna wax worse and worse and worse because you don't listen to no correction. You don't listen to nothing that's being brought to you. You're stubborn. You you stiff necked. Go to go to um, Hebrews chapter thirteen and verse seventeen because we see we just we just read we read the example with Saul that he didn't he didn't obey. Them that had the rule over him. He didn't obey uh, Samuel instructions that was given to him by the Lord. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. It says, obey them that have the rule over you. It, it don't say obey them that have the rule over you when it's convenient for you. When it sound good to you. When it fit your schedule and it fit your preferences. It say, obey them that have the rule over you. Read. And submit yourselves. And submit yourselves. Pull up. I, I, uh, look, get the definition of submit real quick. Read on. For they watch for your souls. For they watch for your souls. So when, when, when orders are given, when orders come out, instructions are given, our job is to just follow our job is to follow. If we are not being, which we are not going to be, we're not being told to break the commandments. Just do it. Because if there's any inkling of unrighteousness in any other, in any other leaders, the most high is going to deal with them. But if you are not being told not to break the commandments, you decide, no, nah, I ain't doing that. It's my life. I do what I want to do. You putting yourself in danger because you're not, you're not taking heed to the counsel that's being given to you. By the, by the leadership, you, you, a lot of a majority of us, we came to IUIC because we seen order, we seen structure. Oh, they, them, they teaching the truth. They teaching the Bible. Then we get here, and then we told to do something. I ain't doing that. I ain't got to do that. This, I can do what I want to do. That's not the mindset that we're supposed to have. Right, right. It looked it, it look good from afar. Then now you came close and got into it. Nah, this ain't as good as I thought it was. They trying to control my life. No. They too strict. No, no. We, we, we have men set up to help us get our life in order. 
we lived our lives contrary to God for what have 20, 30, 40 years. And now that we're getting our lives right, we, we got men that's instructing us that's been in the truth 30 years. They adults in the truth, in the understanding. And we, nah, I ain't got to do that. I'm too, I know what I'm doing. Or vice versa, you have men that set up that been in longer than you, that, but they may be younger than you. And your thought process is, oh, they just some little, they some, these some young men. These some young men, they don't know what they talking about. No, the most high, the most high brought, most high brought the young men as leaders in before you for a reason. So because he brought them in, he brought us in and me, the men that set up, he brought us in. You have to just fall in line. You have to shake that self-willed spirit. You have to shake that prideful spirit and just humble, humble yourself. Follow, follow the lead because the most high set up, the most high set up the leadership. However you slice it or dice it, the most high set up the men in, in, the, in the various camps in, the, in Chicago, Detroit, St. Louis, wherever you at, the most high set up the men that's there. It's your job to follow. It's your job to come in, do what you got to do, whatever get, whatever abilities you got, whatever things you got to be able to uh, contribute. Your job is to contribute. Get your spirit right first and then contribute what you're able to contribute. Uh, read that definition real quick. Read the scripture again. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. So obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Pull up that definition. Submit, accept, or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. Accept, it says, read it, read it again. Accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. So when, it, when, thing, when orders go out, instructions come out, our job is just to follow. It's our job is to follow. It's not saying go and quit. We're not saying go quit your job so that you can follow. But you're supposed to you're supposed to adjust your life around the truth, not your not adjust the truth around your life. Because when you do that, you're rolling in the self will spirit. This the scriptures say, strive for the truth unto death. But we like, nah, I gotta take care of this. I gotta take care of that. Nah, I gotta get this. I gotta what you say? I just, we 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 try to we try to fit the truth into our lives when the truth is supposed to be our driving force. Everything is supposed to revolve around the truth, not vice versa. And that's what a lot of us do. A lot of us are so gung-ho and, and focused on our personal affairs, not saying that we're not supposed to get our stuff together, but a lot of times we get so focused on our own personal affairs that we throw the Lord's work to the side. We just shift it to the side like, no, nah, I'm too busy. I'm too busy to do this. I'm too tired. I got to do this. I got to do that. Hey, somebody else would be able to do that. We have to We have to really discipline our minds to understand that, yes, we work. Yes, some brothers, some brothers, some sisters may be in school. You may, you got things going on. But when you, when you, when you, let's say you, you got to, let's say you got a nine to five. You got to be at work at nine o'clock. And you, let's say, hey, let's, for the sake of it, let's say you work 10 hours. 12 hours. You work 7, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. You get up at 6.30, go to work because you live 20, 20 minutes away from your job. So you get up, jump up, go to work, and then get home and go to bed. You being self-willed, you, you, you just completely disregarded the truth because if that's, your, if that's your activity day in and day out, you're not in this truth. You don't care about the most high. You don't care about his commandments. Because your excuse would be, well, I work 12-hour shifts. Okay. Work your 12 hours and manage and manage it, learn to manage your time, adjust, manage your time so that you can get up an hour early, an hour and a half early, so that you can study, uh, read your four chapters, do what you gotta do, send up your prayers, so that you are making, you got to make time for the most high. Within whatever, whatever your work schedule may be, whatever you got going on, you have to make time for the most high. Because if you if you got a if you got a lot of things going on, 
if you don't make time, you will never have that time. You will never be able to sit down and, and, and peacefully read or study or nothing. Because if you don't make it, it ain't, it ain't just gonna fall in your lap. It ain't just gonna fall up, fall one day and be like, ah, oh, you got some time. No, you gonna it's, you're gonna find yourself always busy. You're gonna find yourself always in that spiral of, I got this going on, I got that going on, like this, that, this, 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 this. And you're gonna be all before you know it, you're gonna go six months, year without even picking up your Bible. Because you got consumed with the things that you got going on and you put the truth to the back burner. We can't we can't roll like that. And if you if you if you've been like that, hey, correct it. You know what? I'm gonna get up. Even if you even if you gotta start with 15 minutes, you gotta start somewhere. 15, you know what? I'm gonna get up 15 minutes earlier so I can send up some prayers, read a couple chapters, read a couple really read a couple of precepts so I can frame my mind and I can form a habit so that I put the most high first. And then you just keep building on top of that. But if you're not doing that and you're not even making an attempt, you're not putting the most high God first. You're putting yourself on a pedestal. You're putting yourself before the most high. And none of us ought to be like that. We all have to all constantly examine ourselves and like 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 I quoted earlier, die daily. You gotta put that, we gotta put that carnal man to death. We gotta increase our fasting. We gotta do those things so that we keep our spirit in check so that we don't roll and get the rolling in that high minded, prideful spirit. Give me uh first Maccabees chapter five and verse fifty five. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 5, and verse 55. Now what time, as Judas and Jonathan were in the land of Galad, and Simon his brother in Galilee, before Ptolemaeus. Verse 56. Joseph, the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, captives of the garrisons, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. Wherefore they said, let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. So when they had given charge to the garrison that was with them, they went so toward Jam read, Jam read, read, read 56 and 57. 56. Joseph, the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, captains of the garrisons, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. So they heard of the war, the warlike deeds that J Judas and Jonathan did, and Simon did, the sons of Mattathias. They heard of what they did. They heard of the great things that they did. And they, man, you know what? Hey, let's go get us a name. We could do that too. That's emulation, copying. That's not your, that wasn't your office. If it was your office, you would have been doing it. Read. Wherefore they said, let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. Jump to 62. Verse 62, moreover, these men came not of the no, seed of... No, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. 60. Verse 60, and so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. They was what? Put to flight. What? Put to flight. So because they got it in their mind that, hey, they can do it so I can do it. That we have to know our, we have to know our strengths and our weaknesses. Everybody, we we all the like uh what's that first Corinthians 12. There's many members in this one body. We all have our place in the body. We all don't we don't all have the same gift and talent. So we have to know our role. We have to know our place. They say they was captains. What did it say? Say they were what is that? 56 say they were captains of the garrisons. And Judas and Judas, Jonathan, Simon, they were the ones. Doing the valiant act. That's who the most I chose. Let them do their thing and you stay in your office and do what you're supposed to do. You helping. You you still, if you still you stay in your lane, you still putting your brick in, you doing what's required of you. You doing what the most high has you doing your you you uh you doing your lot. You doing what the most high put in your in your plate. Some of some of us, some of us have five, ten talents, some of us may only get one. But with that one, you're supposed to reproduce it. You're supposed to use it. Increase. You're supposed to use that gift, that talent to bring, to build up the nation. Not look at the brother with ten to like, man, he got all those. Man, I could do that too. No, that's not the spirit we're supposed to roll in. That's, that's, that's envious. That's an emulating spirit. 
Uh, read on. And pursued unto the borders of Judea. And there were slain of that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. So because of their self-willed spirits, they vainglorious spirit, they got 2,000 men killed. That's what can... Right. They, they had families, wives, kids. And they, because these men, oh, I want to go get me a name. They got, men, they got other men killed. That's how dangerous it is to walk in a self-willed spirit. You're not just... You're not just harming yourself when you walk in the self-willed spirit. You're harming those that are following behind you. They got 2,000 men killed. That's a heavy burden to be on your neck. Because you wanted to be self-willed, you wanted to do your own thing, you got 2,000 other men killed. Read. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel, because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren, but thought... To do some valid act. That goes back to obey them that have the rule over you. They didn't, they were not obedient. They was giving orders and they did, oh no, stay, stay here. No, we're gonna go out and do something, we're gonna do something big. We're gonna get us a name and got got 2,000 men killed. Read on. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those by whose hands deliverance was given unto Israel. Stay in your lane. They was, they, you wasn't chosen for that lot. That wasn't your gift. That wasn't what you was chosen to do. You had your role, play it. You get, we all have our role. Play it. Play your role. Don't look at somebody, what somebody else is doing, and get envious. And, oh, I could do that too. Oh, he thinking, now you start, now you evil surmising because you, you, you putting, you putting, uh, uh, because you got a self-willed spirit and a prideful spirit, you accusing your brother or your sister of having, a, having that same spirit. Oh, she thinks she the stuff. I could do that too. Let me show her. We can't roll in that spirit. That's not how, that's, that's, that's counterproductive to us building the nation. Um, I jumped to, go ahead. Now, before you leave that point, that verse right there, verse 62 tell you, you know what pop in my mind when I hear that? That's 1 Corinthians 12. That's Psalm 75 and 5. Mm -hmm. Meaning the most high strategically put people in certain positions. That's why you're not doing what so-and-so doing. Well, why sister so-and-so get the Lord put her right there? Why brother so-and-so he get to go over here and teach and do it? That's what the Lord had him do. Our people ask, well, who is Moses? Most high hand picked Moses for what Moses was doing. Stay in your lane. Yep. These men didn't do that. Like the officer pointing out in here, they got people destroyed. That also reminded me, remember in Acts, when the men saw them trying to take the spirits out? Yep. Trying to step in somebody else's shoes and embarrass themselves. Yep. Jump to 67. Verse 67. At that time, certain priests... Desire so in the same chapter, a little bit later, it said certain priests, read, desirous to show their valor were slain in battle. For that, they went out to fight unadvisedly. They, they went out to fight unadvisedly. Like the scripture say in Sirach, do nothing without counsel. They wasn't supposed to be out there, but they went out there and got killed. Hence the title, Dolo will get you, being self-willed will get you killed because you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. The most high, the, the most high, the most high is the chess mover. He the one that moves spirits. Stay in your lane. If he put you in a specific office, he's put you in a specific role or place, play that role to the best of your ability until he increase you, until he puts you in, in something else. Don't, don't take it in your own hands. Like, man, I could do that. I could do the same thing. I could do the same thing he did. I could do the same thing she did. No. Stay in your lane and play your role to the best of your ability. And then the most high going to increase you as need be. As it required, as it's required in the body. Go to uh 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. It's the book of 2 Peter. Chapter 2 and verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to de deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Uh-huh. 
but chiefly them, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. So if you're walking in a self-willed spirit, you're walking in an unjust spirit. That's an ungodly spirit. And, be, and as a result of that, in verse 9 it says, and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. So if you're rolling in that selfish, self-willed, it's all about me, I'm going to do me, that's your spirit, you need to examine yourself and repent. Stop doing those things. Humble yourself, because if not, you will be reserved to the day of judgment, and you will be punished for rolling in that spirit. Go to uh, Sirach chapter 13, and then that's that, that, that self-willed spirit is really an unbelieving spirit. It's an unbelieving spirit, because what got us in captivity? Being self-willed. Go to Sirach 32 and 24. It's the book of Sirach chapter 32 and verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord, take him heed to the commandment. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. So he that taketh heed, read it again. He that believeth in the Lord. So when you believe in the Lord, take him heed to the commandments. You're going to take caution not to break God's commandments. And one of those commandments, Paul said that the things that he written to us are the commandments of the Lord. Hebrews 13 and 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you. We see that with an example we read about Saul, he did his own thing. So that showed that he had that he had the spirit of unbelief on him. The uh the other two prophets, uh what was it, Jonathan and Azarias? They they had a spirit of unbelief. They wasn't they they wasn't they wasn't confident in the role that they got. So they wanted to try to do what somebody else did. And they got put. They got. They got two two thousand men put to death. That's a spirit of unbelief. You, 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 you have the. You have a. You have no. That that shows that you don't have. A, um. What am I look? What's the word I'm looking for? You're not content. You don't trust the Most High with what He gave you. You're not content with the things that He provided to you. The understanding that He gave you. The measure of faith that He gave to you. You, you don't believe it, so you want to go and try to do what somebody else is doing. No. Focus on what you're supposed to be doing. And as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, of course, if you, if you come across somebody that's in the midst of sin, yes, you, you're supposed to correct it. But the first and primary, you're supposed to be focused on what you're supposed to be doing in the truth, what you're supposed to be doing, what your responsibilities are. You're not supposed to be walking around with your head high, above, higher than everybody else like you like you, uh, I'm gonna say uh, tough Tony. Like you just can't be touched. No, it's always like it, you got you got brothers that 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 have these uh, uh, what you call it, fighting skills and uh, what is it? training and various things like that that think that you can't be touched. No, it's always somebody out there better than you. It's always somebody out there better than you, and that pride, that that self will. I'm using that as an example. It's, it's many examples you can use, but that pride will cause you to lose focus and think that you can't, that you're untouchable. And we've seen it. We've seen it in the the, the what the Mike Tyson's, the uh, we've seen it in the various uh, famous who in boxing and all. We've seen it in the the movies that we watch. That's what you see. Somebody get they get that they get on that that high horse, they uh forty and old, and they get big headed and think they untouchable, and then somebody come and touch them. That's what the Most High gonna do to us if we roll in that spirit. We rolling around, we just think we got everything together, ain't nothing wrong. We ain't got no issues. The Most High gonna touch us, and we don't want to. We don't want to be. I don't think any one of us want to be touched by the Most High. Because when he touches, he, he, we we going to know. He going to make sure that we know that it's him that touched us. Go to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 14. So if you roll, if you got that spirit on you, you notice, you realize you got that spirit. And if you, even if you think you don't got that spirit, still examine it. Don't just think, oh, he, this, ain't, this ain't for me. You have to examine it. You have to examine it. Okay, do this fit me? Do I, do I, do in my relationships, 
and and with with the brothers I'm connected with, the sisters I'm connected with, my my husband, my wife. You have to think like, man, do I am I like that? Do I roll like that? Do I do these things? We can never get to a point where we think, oh, nah, that ain't that ain't that ain't what I deal with. I'm good. This class for somebody else. Hmm. No, every class, every time we watch a class, every scripture that come out, we got to take stock of ourselves. We always got to take stock of ourselves so that we don't get that prideful spirit on us, that self will spirit on us, where we don't think that we think that we got nothing wrong. We got we, we get like we got it all together. Read that. It's the book of Second Chronicles, chapter six and verse fourteen, and said. O Lord God of Israel. That's what you at? Second Chronicles 6 and 14. 7 and 14, my bad. This is the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, we are those people. We are the Israelites. We understand that. We've come to that understanding. Read. Shall humble themselves uh-huh. and pray. So and- humble out. We have to humble ourselves and pray. We have to recognize that we ain't got it all together. We don't have everything together. We, on, we are a constant work. As long as we in this body, we are a constant work, and we have to all recognize and understand that. Read. And seek my face. Uh-huh. And turn from their wicked ways. So we have to humble ourselves and pray. Pray before the Most High and seek his face. We got to repent. Start keeping the commandments. Understand that we ain't got it all together. Read. Then... Would I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land? The most high would do. So when we do when we do this, when we take these steps, we humble ourselves and repent, the most high gonna hear us and he gonna forgive us of our sins. And he said he will heal their land. Read. Now my eyes shall oh excuse me. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. So meaning the most high gonna when we do these, when we do these, when we do these things in this order, the most high gonna be there. He gonna fight for us. He gonna get he he got our back now. Cause we 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 in a we in a we we humble, we meek. We not rolling in the self willed spirit. Go to Luke chapter 18 and verse 10. It's the book of book of Luke, chapter 18 and verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as the other, excuse me, that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. So this, this is, you see, he, this is that self-willed, prideful spirit. Everything he said, I, I. I'm not an extortion. I'm I'm a, I'm not unjust. I'm not an adulterer. I'm even as this he's he's putting himself on a pedestal above everybody else. Read. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes to all I possess. Read that again. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes to all that I possess. Read on. Of all. Of all that I possess. Excuse me. Keep reading. Read on. Okay. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. So he was humble. This publican, so the Pharisee, you see, he thought he had his, he thought that he had everything together. Wasn't nothing wrong with him. But in reality, you could see by the way he was praying that he his mind wasn't right. He was he was self-willed. He had a prideful spirit. And we know that. He, he knew the law. He had, he knew all the precepts. You name it, he got it in five seconds. He got it in two seconds. He know everything at. That's the spirit he was rolling in. But now you see the publican, he come humble, meek, understanding that, no, nah, I ain't got nothing. And everything I do have, you gave it to me. Read. But smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Uh-huh. I tell you. This man went down to his house justified. And, and most I said that he went, he went down to his house justified because he didn't think more highly of himself as he ought to. Read. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be a base. Meaning you walk in that prideful spirit, you high and mighty, the most high going to 
your fall gonna be great and it's gonna be a hard fall. You're gonna hit rock bottom. The most high gonna see to it. Read. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And the most high is gonna exalt those that walk with a meek spirit, those that walk with a humble spirit. And we see that example through Moses, Jeremiah. When we read them, when the most high said, Hey, you finna go and deliver my people. They say, Me? Me, you sure? That's the, that's the spirit, that's the mindset we're supposed to have. We're supposed to be humble. We're not supposed to think more of ourselves than we ought to. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. 